Hello and Happy New Year. It's uh, 2018, uh, the start of a, of a new year and uh, it'll be interesting to see what this year holds, uh, which is exactly what I'll be talking to you about in this video, at least my my thoughts, my, my, my predictions. I certainly hope you all had a, a lovely uh, break. I, I know I did. Today's sort of my first official day back and uh, it's been exciting um, and it's also been a, there's been a lot of change a lot of chatter uh, in in the media over the last yeah a couple of weeks I would say about the property market uh, let's look at Sydney we're certainly in a very very different phase of the market compared to where we were just 12 months ago the start of 2017 things were still hot the market was still rising uh, I know I was saying look it's coming to an end uh, stay Careful if you're looking to enter the market at this time. Uh, I believe that the Sydney market really was overcooked by about end of 2015, early 2016. Uh, and then the only thing that sort of kept the heat in the market and kept the market moving forwards were two unexpected rate rises uh, that uh, the RBA gave us, uh, which I think if you ask them behind closed doors, they'll probably tell you wasn't the right decision uh, for them. So uh, we're not going to see that now. Uh, we're not going to see any further rate drops unless... Of course, there is a major economic or global economic catastrophe if, uh, if Donald Trump happens to do something crazy uh, or something of, of that regard, then maybe we may see rates drop. Uh, however, I believe that we are now as low as we're going to be from an interest rates perspective and rates will only start to rise. However, I don't think it's going to be a very steep rise, number one. I also don't think we're going to see rates rise until at least the second half of 2018, as I said, as long as there's no international uh, meltdown, uh, purely because the APRA-driven lending regulations seem to have taken the heat out of the market, as it Sydney definitely has. Um, so I think from interest rate perspective, we're okay. Uh, the Sydney market, look, it's already come off its uh, boil. The median price point now is dipped below $900,000. Uh, dollars, uh, which is still obviously considerably high, quite high, um, but it's the lowest it's been in, in, in quite some time. Uh, so the question is, what does that mean? So what's, what's going to happen to the Sydney market? Well, I think for, for a start, we can no longer talk about the Sydney market as one market. Uh, the media is talking about, you know, I think the latest report I've read is about a 10% drop in the market uh, in median prices, which I think uh, is quite feasible. However, that's the broader Sydney market. You, if you've got property, investment property in Sydney, dare I say, you don't actually have it in Sydney, you've got it in a particular suburb. So the question you need to ask yourself is, okay, if Sydney as a whole is going to drop by 10% potentially, what's going to happen to your suburb? Um, and I think it's going to come down to uh, the how, men, how much people leveraged in, in your suburb. What I mean by that is this. Uh, there are some suburbs out there that I'm seeing right now, especially in that northwest area, where vacancy rates are certainly on the rise, 6% and, and above, which is well and truly oversupplied. Um, I'm hearing people who are dropping their rents $50, $60 a week just to uh, get a tenant in and didn't cash flow before. In other words, the rent didn't cover the costs before they had to drop the rent. Um, so with rents dropping in those suburbs and with a lot of people having mortgages and, and seriously uh, leveraging themselves, in other words, uh, cash flow is, is, a, is a struggle. I think those suburbs uh, could potentially see a correction, and some of those suburbs may see a correction greater than uh, than 10%. Uh, other suburbs will stay flat, and others will continue to rise. Uh, for example, it's, it's Long Longerville, uh, I, I think it is, which has a median price point of $4.5 million, uh, yet 55% of homeowners and property owners in that suburb don't have a mortgage. So you know, rents drop doesn't make, make any difference to those guys. So those kind of suburbs, prices will continue to rise. So uh, or at least stay solid. Um, in the North Shore, Upper North Shore, Lower North Shore, maybe Eastern suburbs, I think those suburbs that may have a little bit more going for it uh, because just the, the average wealth or average incomes of those, most of those owners are a little bit higher. So it's going to come down to which suburbs you've bought in. Uh, I think if you bought in the areas where, you, where lots of people have bought, uh, where there's lots of investors, where vacancy rates are, are rising, yeah, then I think you could see a, a slight correction. Um, but again, is that a big deal? I mean, if prices drop 10%, what does that mean? Well, we're in 2018, a drop of 10% probably brings us back to where prices were last year. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I don't think you know, prices were cheap uh, this time last year. Even if it's a 20% drop, it'll probably take us back to 
I don't know, end of 2015, early 2016. Uh, so if you bought in uh, 2011, 2012, 2013, uh, I guess uh, like I was uh, recommending, you're going to be fine. Just, you just sit back and, and, and wait. If you've bought in the later phase of this boom, so sort of later than 2016, in the short term, it could hurt you. Now, you're not going to realize a loss if as long as you don't sell. Um, and I wouldn't be recommending uh, selling because I think eventually Sydney market will go through its, its next boom phase. It may not be for a, maybe five to eight years, uh, but it will eventually uh, because we're having a, we have a rising population. And eventually some of these APRA driven regulations, I think, will ease uh, when the heat comes out of the market com- completely. Uh, so in the short term, w- what I'm hoping is that if you've bought in Sydney, you've done your cash flow in such a way that if rents drop, um, depending on you have a mortgage, and if rates rise, and you could be facing both the double whammy there, you have the cash flow ability to handle that. If you do, you're fine, you continue to hold. If not, um, yeah, it's going to be tough. Uh, tougher for you in the short term, but I would still do everything you can to hold on to it because unless you've got some really dodgy property out there, I think most of Sydney is going to be okay over the long term. But certainly for the next few years, starting from the second half of 2018, I believe there will be pain um, for some of those property owners and investors especially. So that's the Sydney market. What about Melbourne? Melbourne is still growing. Uh, However, I believe Melbourne is placed exactly or very similar place to where Sydney was this time last year. So the gro- there's still positive growth, but the rate of growth is rapidly slowing. And I believe that once we get to the second half of this year, you'll see Melbourne prices start to reverse a little, uh, just like Sydney did. So if you bought property a few years ago um, in Melbourne, and if your strategy was to sort of speculate and uh, make a good gain, maybe look to sell now-ish. Um, if you're the long-term play, sit and hold. Uh, if you're looking to enter the Melbourne market, I would be advising extreme caution. Do your due diligence on the actual suburb you're investing in uh, because if you get it wrong, you could be in for some, some short-term pain uh, after you buy the property. So that's the Melbourne market. I think the, uh, the Brisbane market will be a two-paced market. Uh, the, the, the apartment market, I don't think will drop as much as many people have, have said. Uh, I think there are many areas of Brisbane in particular that I really like. Uh, however, there are some areas that are really shocking. Uh, so you've just got to do your research. Uh, Perth. Uh, look, there was a report as recently as today from the HIA, which is the Housing Industry Association of Australia, which said that the Perth market is rapidly approaching its bottom. Now, what does that mean? I know there are people getting excited. I'm like, hold on, it's rapidly approaching its bottom. That means the prices have still got to fall further. Uh, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be buying in any kind of market where prices are going to be dropping. I want to be buying in a rising market uh, so I can get some equity gain immediately to leverage and leapfrog and move forward with my investment. So the Perth market, uh, I think, is a little premature. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you've got a higher risk profile, if you're willing to be a little bit more speculative or you think that now is the time to buy with the longer term aim in mind, then maybe. But I'm not, not a big fan of, uh, of, of Perth right now. Darwin, look, stay away is pretty much it. I think um, Darwin is a market that's definitely a, a dropping. Uh, I think Sydney and Darwin were the biggest markets to drop in the last quarter. The problem is Darwin didn't have the rise that, that Sydney did. So, yeah, not a great market to stay with, go with. I think the strongest performing markets at the moment are Adelaide and uh, Tasmania. Uh, I'm still not overly confident about those two markets over the long term, purely because I don't see the capital growth fundamentals. And what I mean by that is I don't see rapid population growth. I don't know where the jobs growth is going to be coming from, uh, the economic growth. So I think the gains that have been seen in those two markets are simply taking them from negative to sort of a neutral position, just sort of playing a bit of catch up there. Uh, I don't see those growth rates that those two markets had in uh, 2017, continuing in 2018, especially if our rates start to rise the second half of this year and a similar situation for, for Canberra. Uh, so look, there are some regional towns that may have a little bit of potential left, but I think if you're looking to get into the market and there are still some great opportunities, you've got to focus on the cash flow returns as well as the capital growth prospects. So you've got to be looking for uh, rental returns of at least uh, 4% and above, uh, preferably higher where you can get it. You've got to make sure that you do your numbers so that if the rates rise and rents don't rise to keep up with them or even rents drop in some of these markets, uh, that you have the cash flow ability to handle any sort of short-term cash outflow. Uh, So I would definitely be doing some further due diligence 
it's now is not the time. 2018 is not the year to be just throwing money and buying pro- buying uh, uh, property anywhere. You've got to do your due diligence, um, get the right guidance, uh, look at cash flow as well, as well as capital growth prospects. There are a lot of people out there talking about doomsday. I don't believe that's the case, uh, but I think you need to just take your time, get a bit more advice and guidance. Uh, and I think then you can uh, start to move forwards with investments. Uh, remember many investing careers, uh, many people make their wealth when other people are afraid to get into the market because there are more opportunities. So uh, do your due diligence, uh, still stay tuned to the market. There are some great opportunities out there. And uh, hey, let me know what you think. This is my first uh, Facebook Live and first video uh, for, for the 2018. I'd love to know what you think of, of my thoughts here. Leave me with any questions below uh, so I can continue to do these uh, updates now that, we're, now that I'm back from uh, leave. And I look forward to uh, connecting with you soon. Bye for now.